Hi folks, David Waring here again with InformTrades.com in today's lesson of the day. In our last lesson we learned about the business cycle, why this is so important in trading, and how the government tries to influence the business cycle through something known as physical policy. In today's lesson we're going to begin our discussion on the second tool that the government has to try and influence the business cycle, uh, which is known as monetary policy. And we're going to begin that discussion with a look at one of the key components of monetary policy, interest rates. So let's get started. Interest rates at their core are the payment that a lender requires from a borrower in return for lending them money, normally stated as a percentage of the amount borrowed. If, for example, a lender makes a loan to a borrower of $100 for one year at an interest rate of 6%, then the interest payment and therefore the cost of that loan to the borrower is $6. Okay? Interest is normally made up of the following three components. Number one is the time value of money. Under normal circumstances, most people would prefer to have $1 given to them today rather than that same $1 given to them one year from now. The reasons here include the fact that if you have the dollar today, then you can put it to work, put it in a savings account and earn interest on it, or you know do other things to try and increase the value of that dollar over the next year. Or you can go ahead and buy something that you want today with your dollar rather than having to wait a year to buy that same product. Okay. Um, number two is inflation expectations. And as we talked about in a little bit in yesterday's lesson, if prices are expected to go higher one year from now than they are today or be higher one year from now than they are today, then a lender of money is going to want to be compensated for that loss in value over the term of the loan. Okay, so interest is a very important component here. Number three is how much risk there is that a loan will not be paid back, otherwise referred to as default risk. If a lender, for example, is lending money to someone he knows very well, has lent money to in the past and been paid back, and the loan amount or loan payment amount is much smaller than his or her income, then the lender is going to charge a lower interest rate that, uh, that to, uh, for this borrower than he will for someone he does not know and has not lent money to in the past and whose income is not much greater than the payment required on the loan, all else being equal. Okay, As most of you already know, uh, people borrow money for a number of reasons, some of the most common of which include to buy a house, to start or expand a business, um, and finally to uh, buy consumer products with the trustee credit card. Okay, so as most of you probably already also know, um, borrowed money makes up a very large percentage of the spending in the U.S. Uh, and many other countries. And how easy uh, and cheap the general population can borrow money uh, has a large effect on economic growth. As this is the case, in general, when interest rates rise or, ex or are expected to go higher, making it more costly for people to borrow and spend money, people will be expected to borrow and therefore spend less money, and economic growth will be expected to slow as a result. Because of this, in general, when interest rates are expected to rise, the stock markets will sell off in anticipation of slower overall economic growth, all else being equal. Conversely, when interest rates are expected to go lower, making it cheaper for people to borrow and spend money, they'll be expected to borrow and spend more money um, because the money is cheaper for them to borrow uh, and, and the uh, growth of the economy is expected to rise or increase. Uh, and in anticipation of higher growth here, the stock market will generally rise, all else being equal. Okay, So to get an idea of just how much even small changes in interest rates can affect things, consider the following example. The payment on a $500,000 uh, mortgage as it, at an annual interest rate of 6% with a 30-year term is $2,998. Um, now let's like, take that same $500,000 mortgage, increase the interest rate to 8%, keep the term at 30 years, and the mortgage payment, uh, with the only difference being the increase in interest rates from 6 to 8 uh, percent, increases from $2,998 to $3,699. Um, that's $701 more per month in terms of the payment on that same loan. 
which is $8,412 more per year, which is over a quarter of a million dollars over the life of the, the loan, um, all for the same $500,000 loan. So you can see here how even a small change in interest rates can affect things um, you know, very dramatically in terms of how much it costs to borrow and, and spend money there. Okay, So you should now have a good understanding of not only uh, what interest rates are, but also some of the important components of interest rates, such as inflation um, and the role that these uh, play in making goods uh, not only more expensive, but also you know, the role they play in the cost of borrowing money money or in interest rates. In our next lesson, we're going to further our discussion on interest rates, um, go a little further into monetary policy and learn about one of, one of, learn about one of, if not the most powerful institution in the financial markets, the Federal Reserve. So we hope to see you in that lesson. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and good luck with your trading.